Hi folks, in today's video we're going to be tearing out that old plastic temporary door and painting, cutting, fitting, installing hardware and hanging this new timber door. Stick around and we'll make a start. So with an unplanned change of project, I nipped out to the builders merchants and just picked up a simple external door frame. The door is actually going in this room, it's going here on the back wall of this studio space or what's currently the workshop. Anyway, let's get this out of the uh, plastic, offer it up to the frame, make sure everything fits and then uh, we can get making a start on all the hinges. Now although this is an oak veneered door, I'm not going to be oiling this one like we did with the porch and the other projects. Uh, this one is going to be painted and it's going to be the first chance to see the colour we've gone for for the whole house. We've got all the gutters, the downpipes, the fascias, the barge boards, everything is going to be painted this colour so this could be the big reveal. As far as hardware goes I do have a few stainless steel ones left over uh, but I need three for this size door and I've only got a couple. I've also got loads of these nice brass hinges which I need to use up so I'm thinking that for this door in this location it doesn't really matter and we'll use these nice uh, traditional brass hinges. I think I've done this process a good few times on the channel before so I'm just going to get on with it, uh, run the video and hopefully you can pick up with how I'm working on things and then we'll see how we get on with the painting at the end of the day. on before and that works really well of course it doesn't do your end stop so you could either get the jig or you could set your own thing up but by eye it's just about fine and I can tidy it up with the chisel but just getting it to the the right width is quite handy so that's a good stop guide for it cleaned up all those now with the chisel so everything is nicely friction fit you know it's it's nice and snug on the hinges but a couple of things we can move on to now one is I need to cut the bottom of the door out uh, for the water bar so we can do that then I need to fit I've got a spare although it's pine a weather bar we can glue and fit that on but before we get too far one thing I want to do is pull the staples from the packaging out the bottom what we're going to do now is just cut a small notch out the front side at the bottom of the door to notch over this water bar. Uh, so basically when the door closes against it, half of the door will sit over the top of this with a small gap beneath.
And I'm sure any sensible chippy would have probably just done this with a router and they probably would have been right to do that, but I didn't want to make the mess. Do you know what? I'm not even going to bother with the router because we don't really need it. Just because we've got it doesn't really mean we have to have it. Just because I've got a car doesn't mean I can't walk every once in a while, I guess. That was the right choice to make, I think. Probably would have taken longer to set up the router at the right depth and we have no dust. Last little sort of thing I'm going to do is just ease the edges just by running the plane over twice because any painted corner is always a weak spot. Whereas if you can just knock it off just a tiny bit, it, it's just always a better finish and always less likely to peel and chip on that corner. I might just try and lay the frame over the top. And as long as the sill is pointing up, then we should be all right. That was satisfying. Love it when things work. So, this is quite a good way of showing without crawling around on the floor. We've got our weather bar here. And if we get the door nicely centered, I think I've probably left two or three mil above it. We can cut our weather bar here, which I think I'll make flush with the bottom of this bit here. And there's a shot from the underside. Of course, it's all gonna be painted. What I've just done is I've just taken a bit of trim, it doesn't really matter what it is, just lined it up with the bottom of the door but sent it beyond the bottom of the door by a few mil to allow for the gap around the door and then marked my hinges onto this and then transferred that onto my frame so I can butt it down to the sill on the frame and then just mark on those and then I know without even using a tape measure I know exactly where those hinges are going to go a lot easier that way and less chances of mistakes which I'm quite good at. We could try the router I need to just see how it'll be how the um, lip of the door will interfere with that if it does get in the way I haven't got a jig or anything I could put something on the outside to level it up or we could just hammer and chisel it but we'll decide on that in a minute. All right so this Frankenstein is what I've come up with so I've got a 12 mil block of MDF there, which will just step it away the same distance as the timber. And I've also set our fence back, so hopefully this will work. We're still gonna have to stop it manually, top and bottom, but this should hog out the most of it. <laughs> Trouble is, as soon as you start setting up a block, a stock block or a fence, you rely on that and you stop looking and you know, if you if you know you're in control of where you where you're stopping, you pay a bit more attention, and you need to make sure you can see it. Whereas I just I've gone about two or three mil beyond. It's not the end of the world, and we're painting it, but ugh, so annoying.
we are a few days on now and I've managed to get all the coats of paint on the frame and the door. Now we need to fit it. Unfortunately, I've been putting it off and off over the past um, well, two or three days because of the rain and the weather. We do have rain predicted, but I'm fancying our chances of getting this done in time. Right, that hopefully is the dustiest bit because the washing's out. Might have just made a right mess of the internal plus a skim, but that's something we can sort out after. That's all the old stuff out. We can deal with the plaster once the door's in. I've still got to do quite a bit of skimming inside here, just the detailing. So what we've got here is the old block wall of the garage, which is a single skin. And then I've built a stud work kind of timber frame inside that. And that houses some insulation. Insulation is also on the inside of the studs. So I've just set them away from there. So it's not really a cavity, but there is a gap there that's just gonna help make sure that any moisture that gets through this outer leaf can't jump to here. Uh, so we need to kind of close that off. What I'm going to do is line, because it's a timber door as well, I'm going to line this with uh, some DPC, especially along the bottom, and also deal, detail that into our floor membrane, which comes up underneath the floating floor insulation. Unfortunately, it looks to me like our opening isn't quite square enough and I can't really centralize and square the door frame up. But I'm gonna see if I can just wedge it up and across a bit to make sure everything's plumb. This side needs to go across a bit, so I'm gonna slice a little bit of that brick off at the top and then the same thing down here, it's a little bit tight. So rather than take it all off one side, I'll take a little slither off each. Thank you. 
all the chance here. All right, I took a little break, but just before that, I managed to get the door hung and in. As you saw, the hinges look great. This bronze brass hinges look uh, work really well with this colour. So for the first fit, it's not too bad, but it isn't shutting. Uh, I don't think I've ever had a door that fit first time. However, uh, we can quite simply see the reason here. We've got quite a big gap this side, and the reason for that is these hinges, if we go down here and take a look, not sure if you can make out, but the, these brass hinges, the gap between the two leaves of the of the hinge is really quite big. When you compare it to the other ball bearing type hinges that we've been using, the gap there is much smaller, and that is probably the two three mil that you want around the door, whereas the other's too big. For that reason, we need to take the door off and just notch out another probably two or even three millimeters out of the frame side. thunder and lightning all day. Tell you what, I'd be terrible at fitting doors without these things. Lidl's finest. I'll put the Amazon equivalent below as well in the description. Actually, only the bottom hinge which is causing an issue. I don't know what it is, but I always seem to be hanging doors last thing at night. The detailing on this seal is not great on these pre made um, frames that you get, they just tend to cut them too short and they're just butted up in the corner, so every corner you end up with a cold, drafty spot it's best to, to get this in a roll and then that way you can cut them really nice and either mitre or scribe one piece to the other. And it sounds really petty, but actually it doesn't take much for you know a small gap like that and you can really feel the giraffe coming through. It's a bit of a tricky one because this side is just a little bit tight. So we could shim out the hinges a little bit to give us that gap on this side. But of course then we're gonna bind up over here. At the moment, this side's spot on, so only one thing for it really which is to plane a bit off this side but for 10 o'clock at night what we really need to do is get on and fit a lock so we can go to sleep and rest easy that everything's safe and secure late for an impact driver.
Now unfortunately I haven't got some sort of transformational before and after shot because the walls are so ropey and unfinished. Now when it comes to rendering the wall I'm still a little bit undecided on what route to take so I'm going to be starting up a conversation over on our Instagram account and on our Facebook page and if you've got any expertise in that field uh, then it'd be great to hear what route you take and uh, any considerations that you might want to pass on. Anyway let's take a look at the other side of the door. There we go, it was a bit of a long one getting this door fitted and therefore the video is quite a lengthy video but hopefully it gives you an insight into what was involved in getting the job done. Now I'm not in any way a trained or professional carpenter but it's the sort of thing I enjoy doing and working with timber and wood is always quite a satisfying thing to do. But that said, with wood especially, well any form of window or, um, or door, you really need to think about how water's gonna get in if it gets in at all and allow for that. So kind of think like water, where would you get in if you could? Where's the you know the gutter, the overhang, and all that sort of stuff? Because if anything's going to let you down, it's water. Also, the air tightness, the the draft proofing around it, is also a weak spot. Now up top, where we had a sensible size gap, which was kind of three mil or so, I had some of the expanding foam that we used for the um, glazing on the oak porch. That works really well because you put it on, tuck it in, and it just fills up all the gaps. And uh, then you can. If you've got bigger gaps, then you can go ahead and use some foam. There are a few reservations with using an expanding gun grade foam. Um, one is you can really distort your frames. You don't think it's going to happen, but foam when it expands is pretty powerful stuff. And even on a plastic window, you can get it deformed. So especially with this one, I went really careful with that. Um, you can get a low expansion foam, which is probably the much better route to go. This stuff was just standard expanding foam. However, I really, really just put a thin bead in there and it's for draft proofing rather than holding the window in place. But it's definitely worth getting all your fixings in place first so your frame's not gonna budge when you foam it in. As far as the color goes, really pleased with how it's come out, which is good because the whole house is getting done this way. Um, I can't remember the round number off the top of my head, but you know, it does cost a bit more to get paints mixed to a you know, precise code rather than something off the shelf, but I think it's well worth it, especially if you've done all the samples and tried all the off-the-shelf off the shelf stuff and you simply can't come to a decision. And actually, I'm really embracing the brass. I get a lot of grief for using brass sometimes. Um, I don't know why that is. Maybe it's just old school, but it's an old house. I had stainless steel handles like I've used in the porch took them back and I ordered these. Um, they weren't too expensive, but they've just got that proper quality old worldy feel to them. They're from Iron Mungry Direct, those. Uh, the locks, I had a bunch of those that I bought from a closing down sale at home base. They were all brass, so I thought I'd never get to use them, but now I'm going brass, this is the way to go. Brass on oak, I'm not so much of a fan of, but when using this gray, I think this just works really well. So maybe it's a Marmite thing, love it or hate it. One thing I kind of skimmed through is how this frame is fitted. There's two options and I've used both here. Uh, frame fixings go straight through either into the block work or into stud work. Those will need filling or if it was a solid door then I would plug those with a bit of um, down, you know, cut a plug and put it in there to grain match. You can also use a bracket of some form where you screw that to the back of the frame and then screw that into your framework or into your block work. And that's a good way to go. And of course you don't need to do any tidying up afterwards. And building control or the manufacturer of the window might have a say on that. So do check on that so you can get it all signed off. Like I said outside, there's no finished glamour shot I'm afraid. This side is just unfinished and it's hopefully gonna get done before winter. This will become the studio space um, for Joe and for other maker type stuff. Well folks, that's another door hung. Another thing ticked off the list and hopefully it won't be too long before we can get around to finishing. Now if you haven't had enough door content, then I'm gonna put a couple more videos here. One of those will be using this same type of door but to build our oak pocket door. That was a real challenge in itself and uh, a fun one to do. But anyway, thank you for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself and we'll see you next time.